Seth Hancock, improv comic, video czar, Doing Indie host. It is a privilege to host Doing Indie. The first time I hosted Doing Indie, I was just like, Pwah! It was like someone had said, man, that's it. You've got it. <laughs> you know, there aren't a lot of DIHs out there. And when you meet one, just like, you've got the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, the Butcher, the Baker, the Candlestick Maker. They all come in threes. DI3. I mean, what do you not understand? <laughs> when you drive by an accident, you have to stop because you know that you're the only person who can help. I mean, when you know that, who am I kidding? I'm not stopping. Sometimes when I'm at home, I just sit back and I look at things and, and I just start feeling my face like this. You know, the ICVA had a vision. And, you know, and, and they trusted me with that vision because they get it. I think what it all boils down to is that I am just honored and thrilled every day just to say, I'm Seth Hancock and you are watching Doing Indie. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Doing Indie. You know, for the last two years, people have been coming up to me and saying, Seth, we see you go all over the city of Indianapolis, but what do you really like? And it got me thinking. I was like, you know, my audience really doesn't know me, and I think that you should want to know me, really. Because, you know, my Indianapolis is more than just beer. You know, when I saw you tonight, I uh, couldn't take my eyes off you. I hope you don't mind if I take off your top. Oh, yeah, that's better. No, no, okay, it really doesn't start with beer. I mean, I, I wish it did, that I would marry beer. But you can't marry beer, at least not in Indiana. At least I don't think you can. But you know what, actually, my Indy starts with where I work, right here, inside the RCA Dome. All right, so the work's all done, the weekend's here, and you know what, it's been a hectic week, so there's no place I would rather be than where I'm taking you next. All right, so where are we going now? Well, we're going to my mom's house. And actually, last week, in last week's episode, the kickoff of season three, we went to my mom's house. She has 12 acres down in the southwest part of Indianapolis. And that's, again, one of the things I love about Indy is, you know, you're driving around and you see, like, all these suburbs and these houses, you know, just like any major city, you see houses close together. But you just drive for 20 minutes, and I'm down at my mom's house in... Uh, a little city called Camby. Camby's also known as the Carmel of Marion County. At least that's what they want you to think. But there's kind of a funny story about this sweater that I'm wearing. It's called the European sweater, and it's because, um, you know, you guys have heard me mention on the show before about how I've been, you know, all over the world, and I have. I've been to Europe a number of different times, and every time I go, this sweater goes with me. So in like the 10 times that I've been to Europe, this sweater has gone to Europe. So this is kind of a cool sweater. You guys are privileged to see the European sweater. You know, when I wear it, I just feel historical. Like Napoleon. Only like a foot taller. <sighs> yes, yes. We have now entered Camby, Indiana. All right, so we've driven for like 20 minutes, and this is one of my favorite things, is coming down to my mom's place. Down here in beautiful Camby, 12 acres, and it's completely isolated. I mean, over here you've got Heartland Crossing, one of the biggest subdivisions in Indianapolis, and I can come down here and I can just get completely uh, lost in being down here amongst the trees and the animals and the fishing and all that stuff, and I get to play with my dogs. You guys are such good puppy dogs. Oh, you guys are fighting over who gets to lick daddy. What better way to start your day than hanging with your family? Mine. So let's meet him. This is my mom, Karen. Welcome to Down on the Farm. <laughs> this is my dad, Don. That's my wife, Lisa, down there. Then there's our dog, Mabel. And then this is Maggie. And this is my girl, Matt.
And now for a segment we'd like to call Grandma's Life Lessons. Work hard, have fun, and don't be stupid. Who needs therapy with lessons like that? Thanks, Grandma. Okay, so you spent the day with your family and the dogs and the horses and all this stuff around here and you're starving. Well, there's no better place than on the southwest side of town than something that's known nationwide. It's called Gray Brothers Cafeteria, or for those of us who just grew up on the south side, we call it Gray's. Okay, so you're coming to Gray's, as we mentioned before, and it's G-R-A-Y apostrophe S, but when you come, you come to G-R-A-Z-E, because the food here is awesome. The place has been around since 1942, the same family, same management since that time. This guy right here, fourth generation owner, Jason Gray, and, and Jason, Gray's is kind of a staple of Indianapolis and their surrounding area. I mean, you're officially kind of in Mooresville, but uh, this restaurant means a lot of things to a lot of people, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, I think it's a place where people know they can come and get good food at a good you know, a good price and, and you know, know what they're going to get every time they come. Really nothing has changed you know, since 1942. You know, people, they say they come here, they know what they want, and they know if they, you know, they, know they come, they're going to get it, so. One of the things that, that we talked about earlier that you mentioned that, that also hasn't changed is really what the servers wear, because that's been the same since, what, six, in 66 years. And they come in, I think it's, you know, it's comfort clothing, you know, and, and you know, it's nothing modern day. Yeah, no, no sense in changing things around. Well, I'll tell you what, my wife is standing over here. She is, I mean, she's literally salivating right now. It's, it's, she's almost like a rabid dog. So I know we need to get some food, and then we can continue the conversation while we're eating, right? Let's do it. All right. Okay, so we got the food, and I mean, like I said, I've been coming here for years, man. I know what this place is like, and, and I'm, I'm, it's taken everything that I have right now to dig in. But um, I still want to finish the interview and talk about some things that people may not know because this originally wasn't where it stands now, right? It was no. just it was in downtown Mooresville. Downtown Mooresville, uh, 1942 is when we opened. Um, Great grandfather opened it. Uh, soon thereafter, it, I believe in '54. Uh, is when my grandfather and my great uncle took over. Uh, pretty much outgrew where we were in town. Uh, that's when we moved here, uh, opened up in 1968. And then about 20 years ago, you guys added a carryout service, which yeah. I think we, my wife and I both think is absolutely yeah. huge because again, we can just drive down, grab some grays and go. Yeah, it works out well for a lot of people. You have a catering service too. Yeah, we have a catering service, uh, weddings, receptions, uh, family get togethers, you know, any reason to have food. But if you, if you want grays, the only place you can get it is right here? Right here. Um, I don't think really you can duplicate this. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, you can, you can try, but I think people I think people like coming here just because, you know, this is where their parents and their grandparents came, and you know, I just think it's a place of comfort for them, and I don't think you can duplicate it. I agree. I, I don't think, I mean, when you look around at this place and you see the decor and the people, you can tell it's just generation after yeah. generation after generation yeah. that have been coming here. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys have liked this little insight into my life. Yes, I'm quirky and goofy, and so is my family, especially my grandmother. But you know what? It's my family. I love them. And when I come to the southwest side of town, I get to see them relax, hang out, play with animals, and just have a great time. And then I get to top my day off by coming to a great place like Gray's. If you guys have been here before, you know you want to come back. And if you've not been here, i got to ask you, seriously, what are you thinking? You have to get down to Gray's. It's like one of the Indianapolis institutions. Sure, it's on the outskirts of Indianapolis, but it's worth the drive. So for Doing Indie, I'm your host, Seth Hancock. And remember, in Indianapolis, it's always so easy to do so much. You just have to get out there and do something. See you next time.